Hello friends, welcome to YouTube channel Electronics for You. Friends, in this video, I will explain how to draw signal flow graph from block diagram. Uh, so, uh, this is a video regarding signal flow graph. I have already made some videos regarding signal flow graph. So, uh, in this playlist, you can watch uh, the videos of signal flow graph, which uh, the video, the uh, playlist is available in two languages. One is of English and another one is in Hindi. So you can prepare the language you like and further uh, I will move toward the our topic that is the steps to draw signal flow gram from the block diagram. So the first step is to represent each summing point and takeoff point as a separate node. We know that block diagram consists of summing point and takeoff point. So we have to consider them as a separate node in our signal flow graph. The second point that is step number two is to connect them by branches. So whatever the summing points and takeoff points are there, we have to connect them by branches. But but we have to write the transfer function of this block as a as a gain of branch so this is most important point that is step number three and last one we have to indicate input and output node separately with the branch gain as one now the input and output having branch gain as one is actually called dummy nodes so so we have to indicate them by dummy nodes so these are the steps to convert the signal flow graph from a block diagram. Now let's move toward the um, example directly. So this is an example key one and we have to convert it into a signal flow graph. Okay, so let's move to the solution directly. Now note that we have to indicate each summing point and takeoff point as a node. So let us name this summing point as S1, the second one is S2 and the last one, three summing points are there. I will name it as S3. Takeoff point. Now find the takeoff point. Here the takeoff point number one. Now you will say that this is takeoff point number two. No, actually it is not because it is one and same point because if two uh, takeoff points are consecutive to each other, it is nothing but one and same. So I will consider this one as a single takeoff point that is T1 and this is the second takeoff point that I can see it is T2 okay and this is your input uh, input and this one is your output now uh, let me indicate all these nodes here so this is your our S1 this is S2 now T1 is there so this one is T1 and then S3 is there and T2 is also there. But see here that this is our output node because we have to indicate input and output with gain equal to 1. So I am indicating it with gain equal to 1. Okay, so this is R there and it is also having gain equal to 1. Now let's connect here. Now in between S1 and S2, there is no block. Okay, so as there is no block, we have to connect them because they are connected to each other and it is having gain equal to 1. In between S1 and T1, note there are two different blocks. Now we are having two options here. One, we can multiply these two blocks that is G1 and G2 or if you wish, you can draw one point, one more point there. You can write like this, that is G1 there and another one is G2. Okay, so you are having two option out of which I am choosing one. So here this is G1 G and this one is G2 or we can directly write G1 multiplied by G2 here in between S2 and T1 because two consecutive uh, branch gains will multiply each other. This is the multiplication rule of the signal flow graph. And now in T1, in between T1 and S3, there is a block which is 
G2. So I will write G2 here, but this is not the only branch. In between T1 and S3, one more block is connected. So it is here G3. Now look at the sign of G, G2 and G3, both are positive. Therefore, I am keeping it as positive. Okay. And in between S3 and T2, the connection is there, but no transfer function of block is there. Therefore, the gain will be 1. Okay. One more connection is there in between T1 and S2. Look at this. This is H1 in between T1. This is our T1 and this is S2. In between T1 and S2, I am connecting one more point there. It is having H1 as our feedback gain. And here in between T2 and S1, H2 is there. T2 and S1. This is our T2. So in between T1, T2 and S1, gain is H2 here with negative sign. Look at this. It is having negative feedback. Therefore, this H2 must be negative. So this is a, an example number one where we have converted a block diagram to a signal flow graph. Now, the second problem is this one. Represent the block diagram as a signal flow graph. Now, this is somewhat a complex problem and we have to draw the diagram again. Now, let's draw it. Uh, we will name again uh, now. Note here that the T1, T2, Y1, Y2, X1, X2 all are already named. So I will not uh, rename it again. So this is our summing point and it is E of S. So in solution I am writing here E of S as my first point or simply I can write E. Okay, but it is one node. Then this is T1. It is also given T1. Now X1 is there and X2 is also there. I am directly writing the nodes here. Then we are having Y1 and Y2. Now this summing point is actually let it be it is not named so I will call it as S1 let it be S1 or we can name it as S3 but let it be S1 and last one is T2 and outputs and inputs are there output is C of S it is having gain as 1 and this one is the R of S that is our input. Now let's connect, uh, connect them and we'll find the solution. E of S and T1 are connected to each other. There is no block in between them so the gain is 1. If block is not there it should be 1. Now again T1 and X1, X2 are also connected. I will connect them like this, this one, it is actually negative 1. So minus sign is there, therefore I will write minus 1 here. Similarly, T1 and X2 are connected with a negative sign minus 1. Okay, so this minus and this minus is actually, I have written here 1. Now. In between X1 and Y1, one connection is there, it is G1. So in between X1 and Y1, the gain G1 is there. And in between X2 and Y2, G2 is there. So I will connect them, write G2 there. Now in between Y1 and X1, look at this, it is having minus one as a feedback see there is no block or transfer function given therefore it is one and as this negative sign is there it is minus one same is in case of this one that is it is having minus sign so 
this one is also minus 1 now y1 and x2 is also connected y1 and x2 is connected with negative feedback that is minus 1 and y2 and x1 is also connected signal is flowing in this direction y2 to x1 with positive feedback so it is plus 1 Now look at this y1 and y2 are connected both, is, both are having positive sign so y1 and y2 are connected to s1 both are having positive sign without any block in between them so it is also having feedback as 1 and s1 and t2 is connected here with 1 as our feedback one more connection is there and this is in between t2 and this es so this is connected in this way in between t2 and es and it is having again we can say that it's a negative feedback and no gain is there so minus 1 should be there in our block diagram it should have been negative sign okay so so overall this is our final diagram and let's move toward the next topic that is our practice problem try to solve it by yourself it is one of the simple problem i hope that you will solve it properly and in next video we'll see the transfer function by using mason's gain formula so it is one of the most important topic in our transfer uh, in our signal flow graph so find the transfer function by using signal flow graph this is one of the most important topic we will say it we will see it in our next videos thank you